Cool. All right. Welcome, everybody. We're just getting started. Welcome to uh, Marvelous Designer Q&A stream number five. Moving around all of my little things here. I'm turning this off just so I can uh, adjust my mic. There we go. All right. So we'll begin at about 10 after so people can uh, notice that the stream has begun. Feel free to send us uh, some questions already in the chat. We do have uh, at least two things lined up today and then we'll, we will be taking requests in the chat for demos or getting your questions answered involving Marvelous Designer. I'm gonna close that so I have more space. Why do I have my headset on? I don't need my headset on. And I'll make an announcement to our Discord that we are live. Hello, welcome. Let's see. I'm trying to not slow my look upload. chat over here even though it's being blocked by my microphone all right so today uh before i actually do the full announcement today we will be doing a a kind of beginning example of how to get started utilizing the modular mode, which a lot of people don't know actually exists. There's the modular configurator, and then there is the modular mode where you can create your own modular groups. So I'll be showing you how to do that in the beginning of this of this uh, stream today. And then I do have one user submitted um, example of an error that a lot of people do currently encounter. And then I might be doing some more basic examples of things that our Discord is currently encountering still. 
but feel free to uh, submit questions that you want to see and I may adjust the order of those of those things. Looks okay. Just so weird looking all the way left. There. jump into the discord and let's see So does anyone have any questions they want to see answered during the live stream today? Oops. Bring that document back. Before we get started, obviously. As well as questions that you may have, I am more than happy to answer them, like as an example during this stream as well. Ooh, layers questions, all right. We can cover some layer stuff. So it is 2.10, so let's get started with, at the very least, the intro here, just so everyone knows what's going on. Hey guys, I am Meg. I work with Marvelous Designer as a trainer and community manager. In the chat on RestreamBot, we have both Danny and Eric, and they are both on the biz dev side, and they will be helping me answer questions that I may miss, or more specifically, developer-related questions that I also can't answer during the stream here, because I'm doing examples. Um, so to start off, we have the one submitted question from our discord to the community at marvelousdesigner.com. And then we also have the modular mode, which I just picked because I think a lot of people don't know that it exists. And so let's go ahead and get started for future. I'm going to say this here and then at the end. For future submissions, like if this stream is not live, you can always submit your questions that you want to see during these streams to community at marvelousdesigner.com. And I'm going to copy paste it and post it in the chat so you guys all know. So that you can see your specific questions or even your specific project shown with an answer live on stream. Will there be and then I do want to announce, just remind everyone that we did just have the Crytek Hunt Showdown event. It just ended, but the winners will be announced this week. So let's go ahead and get started. And I've got my whole sheet here. 
moving that across just in case you guys have other questions I can copy paste uh, hit Gaiman you would love to know why you need to do that is that is that what your question is the why on the layers making sure um, I'm gonna go ahead and do the modular mode first and then we're gonna go get to the rest of those so you guys can keep sending us your questions and we will start answering them shortly after I finish the modular mode so let's go ahead and get started all right cool I don't know if I'm too big I feel like I'm ginormous I'm gonna do that I'm gonna do that for now maybe a little smaller um, so <laughs> I'm going to do two things. I'm going to cover the modular configurator for those who don't know what it is. And then I'm going to show you how to create your own modular configurator blocks. So first of all, I'm going to go to the library, go to the avatar. I'm going to go ahead and choose a male avatar and bring him into the workspace. I don't need the library, so I'm going to go ahead and close that again. And I'm opening up the modular configurator. Oh, actually, what I want to do is move his pose to attention pose because I know these modular pieces so I'm choosing the men's blocks so with all versions of marvelous designer all current versions you have these pattern blocks so you have jackets polos shirts t-shirts trench coats for men and for women and I'm gonna go ahead and just choose shirts and I'm gonna choose basic shirt double click and here I have a bunch of pieces of shirts that work together and they will sew to each other. So the basic one, I could also choose a short sleeve and my modular frames have shown up in the 2D window. So that means whenever I double click to import a pattern piece, it'll bring it in in the workspace. So I have my collar here and I'm gonna go ahead and just select a hidden placket for the front piece, so the buttons are hidden, and a box pleat, I believe. Looks like it. I'll just move them all at once, just to show you what the modular mode could do. So I'm just gonna move these because this avatar is new. He's just not in the right spot. And I'm gonna simulate just so we can see it. So I've chosen the box pleat shirt and I have the hidden placket front here. So now if I wanted, I could swap in between and just choose a different collar that I've already prepared previously, or in this case has come with Marvelous Designer and I can swap that out. Let me just put it back in place here. There we go. So just a quick summary, Marvelous Designer, uh, these, these basic blocks that we have here, you can bring in and just kind of adjust and they all, the design, the simple basic design, and they all fit within each other. So the collar is gonna fit into the collar, into the neck hole, and the center front's gonna fit into the back in all the arms. So this is great if you wanna have multiple different designs, but have the same basic fit shape or the shape. So um, if I wanted to have different designs for a bunch of background characters, for example, I could just have a bunch of these set, uh, set pieces, basically, and then just adjust the design of the shirt as I go and just pick different pieces to just kind of slap them together and have a bunch of different, different designs really quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete all of them and return him to the A pose. just because it'll be easier for me. And I'm just gonna grab a random garment by right-clicking and adding to my workspace. 
so here I have a basic shirt and I want to use this as, let's just say, my first modular mode block. So I'm going to go ahead and I have my, my pattern piece here. You can design in the modular mode as well, but this is a little easier for just showing you. I've gone into modular mode, so that's in the top right corner. It's under simulation. It's the modular mode. Let me close the configurator for a little bit later. And check the check, because I've missed a lot already. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's a standard, really standard A pose. Um, it's best to work in this for Marvelous Designer for beginning your drafting of your clothes because having his hands to the sides will be a little bit difficult when you want to, let's just say, make a sleeve or make an adjustment to a sleeve or make a bell sleeve. Having his arms to his sides is going to cause collision with the sleeves if you want to, for example, make a sleeve like mine. Because going from this to this might cause some collision issues on the side seam. So let's go ahead. So I have my basic t-shirt. I have no ribbing on the collar. So I'm going to go ahead and open the modular template presets. So for these presets, we have the uh, all of the ones that you saw previously. So we have the t-shirts, shirts, pants. Let's go to shirts. We have basic and short sleeve. We have pants, skirts, dresses, jackets, and coats. So these are more complex. So just for the beginning here, we're going to do a shirt. So there's shirt basic plus, so this does include the collar, raglan sleeves, and uh, shirts with ribbing. But we're just going to be doing this basic shirt here. So now that I've chosen the basic shirt, the t-shirt basic, my modular frames show up. So you'll see these if you actually open up the modular frames in the modular configurator or configuration. Yeah, that, that I'm blocking you. Uh, that was me who did that. Uh, okay, coming back. We're here to learn. So we have the modular frame. So we have the two sleeve frames and we have the front and the back frame. So if I choose my sleeve and I actually just drag it and drop it into the modular frame. you'll see that it's now an active sleeve modular frame. So I'm going to go ahead and do that to the same to the back pieces, to the other sleeve, and then to the front. So I'm just going to move this just a little bit. I could have done short sleeves, but it really, for the sake of this lesson, it doesn't make much of a difference. So then what I'm going to do is check my sewing because these modular frames are interesting. So with these modular frames, if I've chosen the uh, B hotkey or the edit sewing, you see these white sewing relationship lines. So this is showing me that whatever is sewn to this line will sew to whatever is sewn to this line. So I can create a relationship from this armhole, this front armhole. If I sew it to here, it'll sew to this sleeve. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to hit control A and delete all of my sewing. So if I simulate my shirt's going to fall off the guy. And then I'm just going to use the N hotkey or the segment sewing tool. And I'm just going to go right ahead and attach that or create a sewing relationship from the armhole to the armhole line here. Uh, the version I'm working with currently is the 9.5. It's the most updated version of Marvelous Designer. 
uh, with the version being, oh, I'm going to move myself out of the way here so you can see it. Uh, the version I'm, the specific version I'm running is 9.5.1463. So it is the most recent update if you download Marvelous Designer from, from our website. So ooh, we do have tutorials for beginners. Let me grab that and copy paste it into the chat because I have my little cheat sheet up it'll let me paste it that should lead to the introduction series and then we have a few more within like within the past five months or so basically the year 2020 2019 we have a whole bunch of new tutorials available using the newer versions of marvelous designer we do have some that were just on nine so just be aware of the uh, user interface differences all right so i'm just i've uh coming back as you've seen, I have sewn the armhole to the armhole diagonal line here. It creates that relationship to the sleeve. So I'm gonna do that to the sleeve as well. So now this sleeve in this frame will sew to this piece. I'm gonna go ahead and do that to the rest of this. So the sleeve to that edge and let's see if I can edit this. You can't really see this here, but it, this frame, because it is a specific sleeve frame, this sews the side seams to each other. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. And if you crisscross your seams or your sewing relationship, you can just reverse sewing with the B hotkey. And I'm gonna go ahead and finish sewing them together. So as you can see, I'm just filling the, the frame with the sewing relationship. So the neck hole is sewing to this neckline here, shoulder to the shoulder, armhole to the armhole, and side seam to the side seam. And the same to the back. And if you have multiple line segments, you can always use the uh, shift select, and then you can select multiple if you want. Let's just say this was two, two segmented pieces using shift. So this would be uh, one to end sewing, but I don't need to do that. So I'm just gonna let the one go. Now this is pretty much done. The only thing is anything on the interior of these frames, you cannot, you cannot create a relationship to the rest of the frame. So the center front, if I simulate, the center front and the center back are no longer sewn because I did delete all of that sewing. So I'm gonna go ahead and create that sewing relationship on the inside. So just be aware of that. You might not want to, you know, control A, delete all of your sewing <laughs> if you were to do a more complex shirt, but just for this instance, it's a good example. So there we are. I now have a basic shirt and I can make adjustments to it. But first, let's go ahead and create our modular, modular block. So I'm going to go create off screen folder. I'm going to go ahead and save this body first. Going to my blocks. If I refresh it, going to blocks, and I have a new folder. I've just created that off screen. And we'll make a happy shirt, <laughs> Bob Ross. You know, happy mistakes. So I'm creating the my this body. So I'm just creating that body first. Save. I'm going to use the block component thumbnail. Uh, you can create a new thumbnail and just select whatever image you want, but I'm just going to use the block components that exist. When I do this for the for the first time for this shirt, it's going to create a modular structure. So I can name it anything. I'm just going to name it t-shirt.basic. And I'm going to pick a thumbnail. These are already existing in previous modular sets. So this one would be where if you finish the entire garment and you want to have a basic t-shirt, this is what you would do. 
uh, you would just basically have your like long t-shirt, short t-shirt. You can always like pick a picture that you want, whatever JPEG works for you. So I've gone ahead and created it. And it's because I have three screens, it appears behind everything. T-shirt basic, I can see what my thumbnail is gonna look like. And I'm gonna hit okay. If I go to my modular configurator and I go to the little plus sign here, because I have the blocks, but then I also have my new folder. So of my new folder, I created that basic shirt and I have this basic shirt first. So let me add the sleeve to it next. Same folder, sleeve, save. I'm gonna use the block component. Sometimes it hides, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes I click away. Let's see. For clothing garment courses within the gaming industry, currently we have the only, the closest you have. Um, oh, you know what I did? I can still see it. I don't know why it's hiding. I'll just create the sleeves again. I accidentally deleted my sleeves. Don't delete your sleeves while you're doing this. And you try to go too fast and then you give yourself a problem. Don't do that. Um, but coming back to the question about the garment clothing design courses, um, you can follow a bunch of patterning courses. There's a bunch of like TR cutting online, or you can find a bunch of different garments, um, garment like creation or patterning lessons. Um, we, our sister program, uh, Clo does have some more uh, kind of patterning instruction, but they are meant for the fashion industry. And they're the ones that, that program expects that you already have a pattern file already made. So you can check, uh, we've, in the, in YouTube, we have linked their website. We have linked their YouTube channel to ours because we are under the same umbrella, but just be aware it might not be what you're looking for. So just a heads up. All right, so now I'm gonna save my sleeves again. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete these because I don't know why they're not appearing today. Use block thumbnail. Of course, the one time I do this, it makes an error and I don't know what I'm doing wrong. But normally that doesn't happen. There we go. Sleeve. Undo that, check my sim. Okay, so I'm just gonna save this under an entirely new folder. I'm gonna just save it as sleeve one, just to spite it. Normally this works. You guys get to see the first time I've ever had an error with it. All right, fine. Be that way. Be that way, computer. Normally that doesn't happen. But if it does, just delete the folder and then just save it again. Body one. Use block component name. 
basic shirt. I'm just going to choose that basic t-shirt again. Yay, Rosemary! Welcome, Rosemary. Uh, in, in the chat, Rosemary, we have Danny and uh, Eric. And sometimes me. Okay, there we go. Basic t-shirt. We got the body. Let's see. And then I will save the sleeves. Use block component. Yes. Sometimes refresh works. I have a feeling that I just need to close this because I'm also trying to upload a bunch of things, which is the stream. I'm going to test something out. So we basically have these blocks. I'm going to do something. Murphy's Law is. Well, welcome to the stream, Rosemary. Uh, for the first time ever, I've had Marvel. I've had the uh, modular mode decide to do some fun things and just hide all of the new modular configurator blocks as I make them. See, there, there it is. I knew it was going to happen. There we go. Let's bring my avatar back in. This is most likely happening because I'm live streaming because I had this happen, an error happen before during a stream. But just for fun, let's bring in some pants. Add. And then I'm going to remove the modular relationship. And we'll just do the pants this time. Going into modular mode. And I'll show you guys how to do pants. Pants. Why I'm saying pants this way, I don't know. Don't judge me. I don't know. All right, so. Moving the frames in. Again, it's the same thing. I'm just going to go ahead and delete all of the sewing relationship because they are very simple. Don't do this if they're not simple. Uh, I am missing things in the chat. Or did I swap them out? Oh, we chose, I chose the wrong one. Find Elder Skirt. Doesn't matter. Okay. So I'm just doing this again. And you can use them incorrectly if you want. I just did, as you can see. But let's just say this is done. And again, I can save this as I'm pant. It's a skirt, but don't, don't, don't look at me. Yeah, so it's it's quite useful when it's you're not streaming and then it crashes. So don't stream and do try to do this. There we go. So as you can see, I now have the pant and I can bring it in. And then with this pant, I can then make a bunch of different iterations of the same style of pant with different pockets if I wanted to, with different colorings, different color blockings. I can slice up these pants and do a bunch of different colorways. But here I have a t-shirt that I can also bring in, or in this case, I didn't save the sleeve. But we are currently in modular mode, so it's only gonna bring in the, those single pattern pieces. If I wanted to use it appropriately, I would go there. I would bring this in. 
I would remove the modular relationship just so I can have more than one. And then I would bring in the shirt. Just make sure to remove the modular relationship before you actually uh, try to import another pattern piece or another garment from the modular uh, configuration groups. And there we go. So we have the basic, the super basic beginner's guide to getting pattern to getting your own uh, pattern pieces into the modular configurator groups or the pattern blocks as I call them. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. Oh, you can also edit this too. So I can hide the pants if I want. I can have different groups. I can create different folders, of course. And I don't want to rewrite it. So you can always make a uh, edits to these actual groupings that you've created. And I'm just going to go ahead and close out this tab under my modular configurator. And then I'm going to check the stream. Um, but yes, welcome, Rosemary. Uh, I want to say Rosemary is one of our super users. She's super, super uh, kind to everyone in our Discord. Uh, and Rosemary has a wonderful wealth of knowledge if anyone has questions. But as always, you can always ask us too. Don't bother Rosemary if she's not on. Just be aware of that. Rosemary is a great resource um, in our Discord and in our forums. So yes, if you have a lot of different clothing parts, you can customize these, these groupings so long as they're under the same umbrella. So coming back, let me just choose this sleeve here. So everything in dropped shoulder, I can sew together. Oh, let me grab you the Discord link. So when you create your, uh, <laughs> which one of us is on the Twitch? It's really funny. Um, so you can, uh, coming back up, let me scroll back here. Uh, creator toughen. Yeah, you can customize it so long as they're under the same umbrella. So if you create a dropped shoulder piece, make sure that you make no changes to how things sew into each other. So if you make a sleeve that's a raglan sleeve, you can't really sew that into a drop shoulder sleeve. It has to go into like the raglan sleeve set. So just be aware of that. So long as the fit is the same, you can, you can keep them interchangeable. So when you're designing these pieces, remember that you're trying to keep them interchangeable and you're just doing design, design edits. Okay, and I'm going to remove this. And move on to the Discord question. Actually, a user in Discord by who goes by uh, Daniel, he encountered this interesting mesh error. So I wanted to show this to everyone live so that we can use it as reference for if anyone encounters this in the future. And I did get their permission. So I'm going to go ahead and just bring in this shirt, right click add. So Daniel had this uh, bag OBJ that they had brought in. So I'm going to go ahead and add it, import add OBJ desktop pockets. They're working in centimeters, so I'm importing in centimeters. So this was something interesting that they had encountered and I wanted other people to see this and note if this is happening to you, take a look at the thing at the OBJs that you've imported. So this is what was happening. If I can angle it correctly, not just that, but specifically here, or did I already clean everything up? So they had, if I can pull it, I can just bring it in closer, I guess. They were having collision issues like that. 
So what was happening, then they couldn't figure it out. So what's happening here is you can kind of see it as I'm selecting it. This is not one clean mesh. It's multiple layers of mesh of all of these different components. So if I select all of this and turn on wireframe, and I look this way, I'll just rotate you. You can see that there's multiple layers of mesh here. And so what our, what our simulation, what Marvelous Designer is trying to do is when the cloth encounters an OBJ is trying to go to the, um, to the normal face. It's going to go on the outside. But when you have multiple layers like this, well, it's going to try to go to the outside, but you have so many layers that it's going to get stuck because there's multiple normals. So I think I already cleaned this piece up, but let me bring this back. So if you have kind of a, an, un, a not really cleaned up yet OBJ that you're bringing in to design with, you can select it. What I did that made it work was I changed the skin offset for this imported avatar as four. And then I did smooth avatar on for this. And then I had done division level of three just for the avatar. And so then it kind of pops back out instead of sticking inside. Oh yeah, that's what was doing it. It was at 10 particle distance as well. So if you encounter that issue, especially at a 10 particle distance or a lower particle distance, I see in words. Let's simulate again. So this shirt is back at 10. That's what I did wrong. Let me do this at three and then subdivision one, smooth off. Okay, I'll try that one more time. There we go. So once at 10 particle distance, it's going to get stuck. So that's what, that's what Daniel was encountering. So the answer again, going back now so you can see it better. Smooth avatar three, not whatever I just scrolled up. And then I added just the skin offset for four and simulated and it just popped right back out. What in the heck is going on with people today? So that is just an example of if something is, if something, why does dividing help? Oh, okay, so why does dividing help? Because I'm actually adding if it'll turn on here. Next, I'm actually increasing the mesh density. If it will do it for me. Oh, I have smooth avatar on. Let me turn that off. There we go. It increases the density just a little bit of division. Let me go up to four. So it increases the division, but it really only applies when you have smooth avatar on. So. I think it's gonna be mad because I'm simulating. So it's gonna increase the subdivision. So because I mistook my uh, the pocket as as white, yeah, I crashed it because I try to do too many things all at once because I'm impatient. So subdividing, yes, thank you. Thank you, Seth. I was gonna show it, but I broke it. There it goes. 
see if I can actually show it this time. For creating low poly clothes, it would be, it depends on what's going on. So there could be reasons for it falling through, such as um, you've brought in your avatar and it's too small, or, okay, so this is actually a smooth avatar on, this is the subdivision. <laughs> Look at all of the verts. <laughs> it's so many verts. You could probably just do one. <laughs> just because of what a, how this one was made. As you can see here, this entire thing looks white, but it's just because that's how dense the wireframe is. So that's going to help. Bye, have a good night. Uh, Lien, Li Lien. I'm sorry, I can't say names right. Yes, thank you, Rosemary. Um, so for, for the low poly clothes, it depends on what's happening. So you could be importing your garment, your avatar in too small and it's just falling off because of the frame, because the wireframes or the mesh is so large. It could be a bunch of different reasons aside from just it clipping through your avatar and falling to the ground. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Check the Discord. As well. Um, clips through the avatar. There could be a lot of reasons why it's clipping through the avatar. Um, here, I think I still have it in my clipboard. You can always send us uh, examples of what's going on with, like, in like the actual Discord. And you can have other users answer, not just us, because we're not live all the time. Um, if you want to create low poly clothes. If something's happening, it could potentially be just like a user error, like you've brought in your avatar too small. For example, a lot of things can happen with that. So that's on my list next, aside from aside from layers, because we had someone ask about layers. Um, Let's answer, who had the layers question? Are they still here? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the current one. So issues that happen if you've imported your avatar too small, basically, or if you're working too small. So let's see if I actually have an avatar that is too small. Yeah, you don't need to simulate it. You can just export it right away. Let's see. Oh, I want to bring him in as FBX. Import FBX. I'm just going to pick it. Oh, wait, that's the animation. I forgot. Import FBX. I'm just going to do it the right way. Um, my desktop. Okay, you're here. So if I zoom in, my avatar looks perfectly fine. So I'll answer your, your layers questions next. Um, so if I zoom in, it looks perfectly fine. Um, if I want to start drafting, however, let me just go ahead and make a super simple shirt. for this avatar and close it. Oop, step back. So here's the first indicator that my avatar is too small. 
a lot of people encounter this who are new to Marvelous Designer and they don't realize that their avatar is too small or you just find out the hard way that it's too small and you didn't save it the right scale. This, all your curves are just weird angles. As you can see here, we've had this a few times in the Discord this past week, so I wanted to touch on it anyway. So you can see here, my neckline is just a straight line. Like this is not what I just drew. <laughs> I don't know why this is. It's because it's too small. And I don't realize this yet because Marvelous Designer works in human scale. So imagine trying to cut a piece of you know fabric this tiny. It's really hard. And you're gonna have this similar issues, like, but the weave would end up coming apart. This is the number one issue. <laughs> Rosemary, generally, you beat me to it and answer them before I can. And I'm like, thank you, Rosemary. Um, so this is the number one issue new people have. So what you can do is once you, if this is happening to you, check your scale for two, two ways. You can like zoom out and check your avatar's height, or you can check the circumference measurement. The circumference measurement for an, a normal shirt should be, let me actually just bring one in. Let's do that t-shirt again. Right click, add. Add. So you can do multiple things. You can bring in one of the shirts that exists already in the modular mode and take a look at your scale. Because this is human scale. This is super teeny tiny doll scale. So you can check your scale, number one, by bringing in a shirt. You can also check your scale if you know the approximate circumference measurement for like what a shirt should be, or at least the number of um, decimals it should have or points. This one front shirt is in the thousands, let's just say. Or, uh, yeah, is in the thousands. So if I click this one, it's in the hundreds. So this is, this is 14 centimeters. Uh, a, a shirt on a person is never going to be that small. So you can check your line length as well. So if you're making a checklist, check, first of all, check this. Check your shape at 20 particle distance, check your line length. You can also bring in an existing human scale garment. And you can also check your mesh in another way. Like this is kind of showing you what's going on with the mesh. Cause my mesh here is what it is fine on my avatar. But if I check my mesh in the 2D window It's so teeny tiny. It's so small. And that's where it, that's what can tell you and get and get you uh, leading to finding that answer, which is you've imported your avatar too small. And so the reason I'm saying this is if you're trying to simulate this on your avatar, it's not gonna it's not gonna simulate properly. I'm gonna first of all I'm gonna delete this upper mesh. And your uh, arrangement points also aren't going to auto fit if you're trying to do that as well. Normally I would use the hotkeys to rearrange myself, but if I do, it also tells me my scale's too small, so I'm zooming in. So the hotkeys for looking around the avatar are on the 10 key, by the way, just so you know. Two is in the front, eight's in the back, six is on the sides, four, six and four are on the sides, and then Seven, uh, one, nine, te one, nine, seven, and three are all a uh, quarter. So let me unfold this and like, let's just say I, I don't realize this yet. I'm like, well, I'm just gonna go ahead and move forward. Maybe, maybe I can clean it up in post or something, you know? I'm gonna make sure I can actually see the normals. Yep. And so it. Oops. And crisscross them. And I can still sew in the 3D window as well. Let's just do that. Oh, another telltale sign is that your sewing lines, you only have like the two end points for if something's too small of a scale. You don't actually have multiple sewing lines in between your lines here like you should 
so you just have the two ends and you're like I wonder why that is that looks weird but it's clipping through the avatar already so I don't know if that's what you mean by it clipping through the avatar or if it's just still falling to the floor but this is another indication that the mesh is too large so the avatar should be imported at a larger scale And I'm going to go ahead and delete him and zoom back out. So for the layering, let me go ahead and bring some stuff in. We'll do male, avatar. And then let's just see. I will use the modular mode actually. We'll do it again. I'm gonna grab pants for him. I don't know why I do that. Add to workspace. Pants. So I'm gonna add layers. So I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna move his arms first actually because I keep forgetting to do that. Male, pose, pose only. And when I do this, it simulates so nothing uh, collides with itself. So it's good if you already have clothes on. That's why it simulates, whereas sometimes it'll just snap into pose. It's because you have some cloth in the simulation that it needs to simulate. So I'm going to grab a polo and I'm going to choose a raglan. All of these have sp all of these have skeletons. Brandon. Already. Um, coming back. Let me turn his flesh back on. Um, I'm just gonna grab collars. And because he's still new, I'm gonna move all of this. Out of the way. Now these ones, as you can see, are all uh, high density. All right. I didn't realize this guy had seven particle distance on him. Or this shirt, at least. Come on. Okay. There. I should have done that. Okay, let me do this first. So for layering, the first thing I'm going to do is you can either do multiple things. If you're doing what I'm doing, you have two choices. You can deactivate the pants, which would be control J. So I'm going to go ahead and just do that really quick just so it's a little easier to get on. And then we'll deal with the layering afterward. And where is this select mesh? Where are you at? So it's you. There we go. I just use the select mesh tool to pull out the specific part of the sleeve that's stuck inside of him. There we go. Oh yeah, sorry, Brandon. Thank you, uh, either Danny or Eric in the chat. Deactivated pants. Okay, that's funny. Welcome to my channel where I just deactivate pants. Only in Marvelous Designer. It's a Marvelous Designer sub subset. It just teaches you specifically to always use deactivation. Anyway. So I've deactivated the pants so they're not causing an issue. But. Let me remove the modular frame. <clears throat> so I'm going to also add a jacket to this. 
So the first thing I want to do with layering. So hit, you have encountered some issues with layering. First of all, layering happens when you have lower particle distance. So it should be at, it should be 20 or lower. I don't know what you're, how high you're working in, but you want to do it in the particle distance. I mean, I can do it in 10. Let's see. Um, cause you're encountering having issues that there it's falling out or why you need it to go back to zero cause you're having issues. So this also, this method I'm going to show you also prevents those issues from happening or helps you get closer. So depending on how big your, your pattern pieces are and what they are, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to tuck those pants into, uh, tuck the shirt into the pants. So first thing first, I'm going to select my pants. You're working in 20. Okay. Cause these pants are 20 and the front of this shirt is 20. So I'm going to go of course to layers. So for people who don't know, this is how layering works as well. I'm going to layers. I'm making the pants a layer above the shirt, but I am not um, activating this yet. What I'm going to do next is select the entire shirt and I am going to shrink it horizontally. So weft, so so with weft and warp, so weft is left, warp is up and down. So if weft left helps, weft is left and right, warp is up and down. So if I do 80, it's going to shrink around his waist and make it smaller. So now it's tight on the, on the body. So now I'm going to activate my pants. Actually, best practices, I'm going to freeze the shirt activate the pants and then simulate and the pants pop right to the top. Then I'm going to bring the shirt back to 100% shrinkage weft because that's how it should fit. And I'm then going to unfreeze it. So that is the best practice and best way to get your layering to work for you. And control. Un that. And now they're tucked into the pants. So if I also want to adjust how it's tucked into the pants, I can freeze the pants while it's still simulating. I can pull these out if I really want. So then I can unfreeze the pants. And it's, you know, he looks like he's ready to go get some coffee and pick up the mail from outside in his tracksuit. Um, but don't judge him yet. So let's go ahead and add a jacket. I'm going to go back and actually do the same thing. So I'm actually just going to step back in history. And go to think freeze. So I could hit control Z, but I can also just go all the, all the way back this way. I went a little too far, but that's okay. There we go. The pants are over the shirt. And then I'm going to go ahead and unfreeze this again, but keep it tight and go and move him to a slightly more open pose just because the underarms are colliding with each other. And then I'm going to go back in and grab a coat because some of you guys said you also were having these issues with layering. Mind you, my layering, my layers are still active. So before I can actually, I will show you what happens if I leave the, if I leave the pants at layer one, and I'm going to go ahead and bring in, oh no, I shouldn't have done that. Let me move my shirts out of the way. 
Okay, now I can continue to clean that up. All right. So now I'm just grabbing the trench coat pattern pieces. What I'm going to do is just freeze this so I have a color difference. Because I just need to adjust how this lays on him. All right, so this is gonna, this is gonna be bad. I'm telling you now, the reason that this is going to be bad for those people who are not used to working with layers is my pants are still at layer one. So when I simulate this, part of this jacket is going to try to go underneath the pants. So if you encounter this issue, this, that's what's happened. You need to make sure that your pants are no longer at layer one. And then I'll show you how to properly layer the rest of the jacket. I'll have to bring it in again, but. So what's happened here is, I don't know if you guys have encountered this issue, but look, <laughs> my jacket's tucked into my pants. So if you've had issues with your layering, like an example, pants being the upper layer where your coats shouldn't be, that's one of them. A lot of that can actually happen with your collars. So the number one spot I've seen this happen is collars because you've forgotten that your collar is a, a, a turned over collar and you're trying to tuck it into something else. Or I want this collar to be above this other piece. Um, if you increase the layer of the collar, it's just going to pop out. Oh, were you having problems with the collars? So if you make your collar an upper layer, it's gonna pop out and try to be out the other layer, even though it's sewn to a lower layer. So when you encounter collar issues, it's pro it's going to be best, honestly, just if you want this collar to be above, to just re uh, re uh, set your collar. Wait, you were having problems with just layering your collars and your overcoats, or you wanted this collar to be above? Because. Because you can, but it does cause some issues, especially if it's a two-piece collar. That's generally where the issues encounter are the worst. Is this what's happening to you? Because I would, I would honestly do it manually and then just pull the collar up. Okay, so the collar that is that exactly what happened? Because this is a, where's this shirt? This is a one piece collar. So you have multiple ways to do this. So even though it's tucked into his pants, if that's what you're encountering, I'm going to give you, I'm, I'll show you how to, how to, how to get it. You need to go back to the staff where it's underneath. So you have multiple ways to do this. I'm going to go ahead and freeze this jacket because I want to style it. So I'm hitting control K to freeze, or you can right click your selected pattern pieces and you can choose freeze. And then what I'm going to do, there's a few different ways to do it. So, okay. So if you're trying to use layers to get it to do that, it's because multiple reasons, the uh, collar, the lapel that's opened, is, is the uh, flipped normal. The collar, it's the flip normal and then the underside of the collar is the normal, so it's having issues, as well as this shouldn't be a different layer, you can just pull it out. So your best answer is going to be freezing your jacket. There's few ways to get there. Whichever works for you best is gonna be the better answer for you. And then I simulate. So I can just pull my collar out and pull it over it. I don't know. Generally, you don't want your collar styled like that, but you can. Yes. And Rosemary is uh, answering it more succinctly than I am, even though I'm, I'm giving visuals. Rosemary is just giving us the definitions. Thank you, Rosemary. 
Yes. That's exactly what is happening. So if you want your collar above, I would pull it out after freezing everything else but the collar that you want to work with. Because like Rosemary said, it is trying to resolve multiple different instructions even though they are conflicting. I'm just going to pop his collar. Okay, did anyone else have any other layering issues or questions? About layering, I'm sorry. I know there's a little bit of lag, so... Okay, let me uh, fix the pants and I will set layers back. I'm going to go ahead and delete this shirt. Yes. Oh. Let's see. So if your shirt does get stuck, personally, this is just a modular block. I would just pull it back. I would just reopen it. But if that does happen, I'm going to keep my pants at, I'm going to keep everything at the correct layers. I can also just make this a higher layer, not the pants. I don't want the pants to be a higher layer. I want the jacket to be a higher layer. So my jacket is at layer zero. I'm going to make it a layer above the pants if I want to keep multiple layers. And I'm going to go back to freezing everything below and unfreezing the jacket. It will most likely cause issues with the buttons. But I can just make the jacket a higher layer. Sometimes buttons will have issues if you've already had added them. But in this case, we didn't, which is great. And it's still resolving. So just be aware of the, the layers you have and what numbers they are. Also, you'll notice, I've seen this in the chat for a while or in the Discord. A lot of people ask why they have these outlines. So you can see that the jacket has this blue line and the pants have the same blue line. And people are like, how do I get rid of this line? This is specifically because you have layers. These, these have layer rules applied, so it's reminding you to do then delete these layer rules. I'm not going to add sleeves just for the sake of speed, so I'm going to remove the modular relationship. He's going to have this lovely long vest. So, you can see my blue lines. I need to get rid of them. I need to bring my layers back down to zero. If I do not, this will cause <clears throat> animation issues in the future as well. So I'm selecting all of them and anything that's not the same, you can see here is going to be in red. So I'm choosing layer zero and then I simulate. And again, my shirt is still too small. So I'm gonna resize the shirt just like I did before making it 100% and then unfreezing I should have done this when they were still the same, when they were still different layers but it seems like it worked out okay except for the lapel right here so when you resize it, don't do it in the order I did. You're going to want to uh, resize the shirt first while all the layers are activated. Once everything is done, then you remove those layers. Otherwise, things like this can happen with your lapel, for example. So 
So if someone's having issues with layer cloning. Because layer cloning... It might just be the mesh size. Um, I can show people who don't know potentially in the chat what layer cloning is, but because layer clones different from layers. So layer cloning over and under means I'm it's making a copy of this pattern piece that it's going to be cloned um, over it or underneath it in the simulation. So if I uh, let's see if I can find something useful. I'll, I'll do it with a, uh, a rectangle here. Um, but do we have any other questions involving like normal layers, not layer cloning? Um, or does this answer some of this, the issues that you guys were encountering? And as you guys can see as well, um, because all of these pattern pieces are at layer zero, that blue outline is no longer there. Well, Seth, I'll answer your question after this. I'm just asking about layers, not layer cloning. If anyone has further questions about this topic that I'm currently speaking on, I'll answer your question next, Seth, because I can show you the layer clone, but I haven't had the issue that you're encountering and it might just be that you're having um, just kind of like particle distance issues. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this entire lovely suit. So for layer cloning, for those of you who are not familiar with it, with layer cloning, I can create a pattern piece. Let me see, I have normals on. Okay, this is a bit big. Okay. And I can create a layer clone over. And whenever I create a layer clone, it creates a sewing relationship with any of the um, internal or exterior lines. So any of your line segments, it's going to create a clone of that. So that's why this has a sewing relationship here. So Seth, did you flip the normals or were the normals going in the same direction when you made that? Because when you make a layer clone, the normals are going to be in the same direction. So as you can see here, I've actually made, I shall do this. So if you have internal shapes as well, so while I'm waiting for Seth to answer, you have internal shapes as well. If I layer clone, if I layer clone before I do the, uh, the internal shape and then apply it afterwards, I only have the internal shape applied to those two. But if I layer clone after I've created an internal shape, or let's just say maybe a quilted design, I'm going to layer clone under just so we can see it. So I have three in the workspace. You can see here that I have, um, because it is an internal line that has been created after I've created, that's been created before I created the clone, it now has a sewing relationship. Okay, cool. Interesting how that's working for you in MD9, because I never had that that issue in MD9, and I I I made the tutorials for specifically like making a pillowcase in MD9 using layer clone. So 
so it's interesting that you're having normal directional issues. If you're cur if you have to work in MD9 for work and you're still having that issue, uh, let me grab the contact link so you, you can just kind of send us that file so we can take a better look at it to better assist you. Uh, let me grab that. Let me grab it from the website. Oh, wrong part of the page. Contact. Okay. Here you go, Seth. Yeah, it, I've, I've haven't had that issue, uh, but if you still have that file that's having that problem, feel free to send it to us with as much information as you can so we can better assist you in that way. Or you could send it to me here and I could try to take a look, but I'd still be doing it at ND 9.5. Oh, of course, yeah. That's how it goes. But, I mean, if if it's not respecting how uh, it should work, like, let me do, let me do this. So, sort of what most likely Seth is encountering that is, is potentially a problem is, uh, I'm going to create a pillow with this. I'm just going to create a pressure. So on the upper layer, I'm going to add a positive 10 and the lower layer, I'm going to have a negative 10 just so I can simulate. So this is how, how it should look. Generally, you can also flip the normals if you want, but Seth isn't doing that, but it should be respecting the, uh, the normals. But apparently what Seth is encountering in the chat is that something is going on that um, Seth is encountering that it's not respecting the normals. So this is how it should look. You can flip the normals if you want, but then you'd also need to flip. Let me flip it. You would also need to flip the pressure as well to being both positive to keep it inflated, for example. So you could flip your normals like that, but as you can see in the 2D window, there you go. You just gotta be careful with what happens when you flip it, especially if you're trying to work with something that's exactly symmetrical and like, let's just say I didn't have these internal shapes. So now I have just the generic pillow here. But yeah, that's an interesting uh, issue that you've encountered, Seth. Because I so far can't replicate it. But yeah, this is also if you ever want to create a pillow. This is in the uh, introduction series. Uh, you can create a pillowcase, but we don't flip the normals. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and flip the normal. Now it's deflated. So this is also why you want to remember what your pre direction your pressure is going. Now it's back to being inflated. Let's see. So I've answered his. Let me see if I've missed anything else. So we actually have 30 more minutes if anyone has any other questions as well. Otherwise, I'll start going back to my list of basics. Um, I do have more pleats that people encounter. Let's check. Here. I was just going to do another pleating lesson if anyone wanted to see that. Let me make, scroll back down. Because we've done layering, I've shown you the basics of the modular mode. You can also utilize modular mode for creating your pattern pieces too, as long as you import your avatar at the correct scale. Oh, 
Let's see. An error involving seam tape. Let's take a look. Actually, just bring a shirt in. Yes, that is another good one. Okay, let me answer the question then, and then I'll show you another, uh, well, Rosemary said actually was making a pattern based on the silhouette rather than adjusting for the depth of the avatar. I believe in the introduction series lessons, I do sort of touch on accounting for the depth of an avatar, but I might cover that again if we don't have enough requests in the chat. Let's see. I encounter an issue where I first have, so Michael Yang has a question here that says, I encounter an issue where I first have seam taping along one border of a cloth. Let me add seam taping along a border of a cloth. And then offset the border as an internal line. And they're having a weird result. The offset internal line, one stick together. Let's see. So I'm simulating. So bottom border. So what if I just remove? Let's just do it on a shirt, just the lower row. And and offset maybe it's closer than 50. we'll do a 10 millimeter let's do 10 because that's exactly the depth of the of the border oh the internal line does end up so the, the offset you create is less than 10 millimeters so let's just do five the corners stick together. So I should do it on the other side then. Apply and five. So it doesn't seem like I'm having the same issue. So they stick together, you say. So it'd be here, potentially, correct? So the two corners snap below the internal line. So they're probably what folding or something. Let's make this a 10 particle distance just so potentially we'll see something different. So your line might have a fold angle on it, those internal lines potentially. Because what, so what seam taping does, seam taping is, um, it's, it's applying, let me actually click it. So what seam taping is, is if I go to seam tape, actually if I go to pattern, and I go to the seam taping, and I turn seam taping on, just so you can see, I can change the width, and it's, it has two presets. I can choose fusible, rigid, or heavyweight. So this is the seam tape is as if you have applied the uh, interfacing value to just just a line for a very small for a very small width. So it's actually what seam tape is in real life garments. I don't know if mine has it, 
but some like your fancy like me, like fancy shirts will have seam tape here or in the arm hole and that seam tape stabilizes that seam tape stabilizes these uh the seam so they don't stretch so what can happen though and what potentially may be happening is if your seam tape has a fold angle or if that internal line has a fold angle because if that internal line has a fold angle that might be happening is that is that what's happening because when you apply a fold angle but it only happens at the corner huh and it's just one clean line because you can have fold angles at sewn, sewn, uh, sewn lines too. If I hit B and I select this sewing relationship, I can have a fold angle here as well. Let me delete this fold angle so it stops. Uh, whoop. Is this the right side? Oh, I picked the wrong side. That's gonna look ugly. Let's see. All right, let me do it on this side. So side seam. Oop. Okay. So using the sewing tool, I can select this and I can check in if I have a fold angle. But it can also happen if you have a fold angle within that sewing group and it'll be more severe down here. Ignoring this upper upper piece, is it doing is it doing like that? If I just delete that. Well, if, if you want, you can send us the file and I can actually take a look at it. Uh, da, da, da. If you want to send that to me, I'll answer more questions. And if you want to send me the file, I can take a look at it live on stream if you want. Maybe not today or depending on when you send it, but I can do it on the next stream. Uh, let's see. I know I missed a question. Okay, there's that. But, so I'm going to go ahead and because I haven't been able to solve your problem or at least guess what it might be, um, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next beginner, beginner issue that a lot of people have. Which is, um, which Rosemary kindfully suggested, which was uh, making patterns based on silhouette rather than adjusting for the depth of an avatar. Um, but Michael, feel free to send it to us at the community email. Um, I would basically, if if you still can't solve it after potentially just turning off your seam tape and then doing the offset in the opposite order, like applying the offset, then applying the seam tape afterwards. Um, I would try that as well. Um, by just removing the seam tape, applying your internal line, and then applying the seam tape after. Sometimes that fixes it because it's something that you might not know is there. There might be a small artifact that you like forgot existed or that you didn't know you added or moved. Sometimes that can happen but otherwise feel free to send it to us and we can take a look at it and uh, do it on stream. So going over to the making patterns based on what this shadow looks like. So a lot of new users to Marvelous Designer think that they can just use this and just follow the body. Like this is great, this is what I want. and I want to make a basic shirt. So here's my shirt. 
this sh this this pattern right now does not account for um, the actual depth of the body. So if you look to the side, it is not accounting for any of this distance that it needs to cover. So I'm going to go ahead and do what I normally do, which is unfold this pattern piece and then make a copy because obviously it's the same thing. It's a shadow. So I'm going to go ahead and place that on the back side. And place this one on the front. And turn that off. So then, of course, what I'm going to do next is apply my sewing. I can do that in the 2D window or the 3D window. Now, normally all of this would work. The only thing that's going to be a problem is that I have no depth accounted for in this pattern. So I know what's going to happen. So I'm going to pull this up. <laughs> this is going to be very tight. So this again is one of the, uh, pattern problems that people encounter when they're first working with marvelous designer and they don't know that they need to account for the depth. So I'm simulating now. So, wow, it fits sort of, it's better than I thought. It's really tight on him. And I'm like, okay, cool. Now I want to make other pattern pieces. This is how patterning works. But I don't, but most people don't realize that in the 3D window, you can actually check the strain map of this fabric. I'm gonna turn that one off. I just wanna show the strain map. So I'm gonna show the strain map. It is all red. <laughs> This doesn't fit. If I animate this, or if I simulate and animate, it leaves no room for wrinkles. It leaves no room for anything. It is way too tight. The mesh is already uh, colliding with the avatar. And his, <clears throat> even with the offset being even with the offset being uh, what, three millimeters for the um, avatar and 2.5 millimeters for the, the fabric. So that's a 5.5 millimeter difference. It is already colliding through in some spots. So this leaves no room for fit, no room for movement. This isn't going to work out. <laughs> it is a very squirrely collision. So there's a few ways to get around this. Number one, you need to account for the fact that there is going to be space around your avatar. Well, welcome, Walter. Um, in our tutorials, we actually have a bunch of uh, good basics to start with if you want on our YouTube channel. Um, so if this happens to you, there's a few ways to adjust for this. So what I'm going to do is actually start editing this. First of all, I want to have a curve point. I want to have a smooth curve on the neck. It's so mad. Okay. I'm just curving the neck out. <clears throat> just so it's curved. Because that's what I, I remember, like, what my shirts look like, right? Sure. So the first things that you need to do to fix this is go to the Edit Pattern Tools. And this is just simple ways to start adjusting to understand fit. You want to increase your shoulders because you have the shoulder length here because there is a length that it is crossing across the shoulders. So looking at the avatar, I know that this needs to be higher if I simulate. Oh, wow, that's much better. It fits much better across the shoulders, only across the shoulders. As you can see, it's green or yellow. So that's a better fit. So we're getting there. Let me move this. So then I can see that it's still too tight ar across the waist horizontally. So I'm going to go ahead and symmetrically move this. I should have linked these symmetrically, but you know, whatever. So I'm making the waist larger and simulating. 
So the waist fits better. It's still too tight. So you want to do that again until you get closer to a proper fit. It's going to be bigger than you think. Especially if you've added these waist points. There we go. That's better. Pull this down. Again, these waist points are still pretty severe, so what I'm going to do is pull them out. Now, normally I would say to symmetrically link it across the center if you have 9.5 or above, or only work on the half. But you know, I didn't do that. So I have to do my work twice in a row. Another trick as well is when you're adjusting the fit of your pattern pieces is to make sure that your side seam here isn't going forward or backward. So if it's going more forward, I can show, where is this? So if it's going like this, so you can see how this is falling and it's falling forward. It means that there's too much volume of the shirt in the back of the pattern, as you can see here. This is the back, this is the front. So with this pattern piece that's falling forward, this is a little bit more complex, but this pattern piece is falling forward. You can tell that you just need to adjust these two. So you can just grab the two of them and accommodate for that at the same time. So that way you can keep your side seat going straight up and down. So when you're creating patterns or doing um, that thing, keep that, keep that in mind. You want your side seams to be going straight up and down on the body so that you can appropriately fit. So we'll do that, I guess, to the side. And now this is actually, this, that uh, information was a, a sewing, a key sewing thing in real life. So if you ever end up sewing or making a shirt or something, you now have that knowledge. But these are still pretty pointy, but we'll fix that later. So as you can see here, the neck is still a little tight on the actual neck. So what I'm going to do is move this outward just a little bit on both sides. Normally you do this parallelly. So now it's a little less tight. So here it's still not fitting him properly, especially in the back in the front on the neck. So I'm raising the back because the neck drop is going to be lower than the front neck drop. I'll just give this a bit of a curve so we know what this is supposed to be. Come on. This is the ugliest shirt I've ever made. Okay. Um, so the front neck drop is still too high. So what I am going to do, so you can either lengthen it or you can shorten it. So I'm just gonna, I'm sorry, you can go up or down since this is a up and down pattern piece. So there's that. I'm probably gonna end up moving the neck closer in, but I want you guys to know a little bit more about shoulders. So these armholes, as you can see here, so this is the armhole for new, for new users. This is the armhole here. We can see here based on the strain map. Imagine if you were wearing it, it would be uncomfortable in the red, in the red and the yellow. So I'm probably actually going to increase the shoulders based on that. But what we need to do is carve out this. So there's a few different ways to do it. If you follow our actual tutorials on YouTube, you could do this with the, um, all of this with the line, 3d line pattern tool by just drawing in it or on these patterns, or you could actually create an, a very form fitting garment using the line avatar tool. But in this case, I'm just doing this here and I'm using the smooth curve tool. So that's why we have the strain map. I had, when I click away, it does that. Okay.
Yeah, that's what's wrong. Okay. So I've carved this out already. It's looking a little bit better. It's still tight across his chest, as we can see, and the back, because it is perfectly straight. So I'm going to add some more curves. Why are you doing this? And it's fitting a little bit better, but it definitely still, based on the strain map, needs to have more circumference for the torso. So I'm going to add in the most basic way I've ever done volume around him. There we go. And it's still high on the arm. So this is fine if you're doing um, tight garments, but for a uh, like long sleeve or like actual shirts that aren't made of spandex, you will want to lower all of these points. So I'm just dragging to select and I'm just going to lower it just a little bit like that. And honestly, at this point, I don't want these waist points, so I'm just going to delete them. So now we're getting closer, much closer to a better fit for a shirt. So we can see here it's still tight and it's a little bit back on his shoulder so I want to increase the neck drop just here. Rosemary is now my co-teacher. Um, <laughs> so as you can see based on the original pattern piece you can see how much more fabric there is here. compared to just the silhouette. Let me just put this here. And this isn't even properly fit yet. He still has some neck issues, especially on the center back neck, and he still has some underarm issues. Now there was a new user that I do that ha encountered this earlier. So for the underarm, let's just say this fits okay. We're gonna find out that it's not gonna fit. So when you're creating armholes in the and neck holes, you can actually adjust these patterns and align them properly and, and check how the pattern in the 2D window flows into each other. So I'm selecting my back pattern and I'm gonna double click to activate my pivot points. They've all turned orange now. They were originally blue or clear. So I'm gonna go ahead and rotate that on this neck point. And I'm gonna drag this and make it match up to that neck. And then I'm gonna zoom back out and rotate it some more so that it lines up. So now I can check. So now I see that I've made, that there's some things that are going on with my pattern. First of all, my back pattern piece doesn't align with my front. They're not the same length. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix that just by moving it and dragging it turn simulation off. And I can also see that this is not a smooth curve. I need to cut this out a little bit more because it does start curving in a strange way um, backward. And that's exactly where, not here, but down here, where it's curving too far to the right. This is where that fit problem is. So I would recommend using the edit curve point tools. You can actually add proper curve points. So you add the curve point and then you can edit curve point. Okay. Now I can edit this. And which pattern piece am I on? Okay. So now I can see it. I'm going to hide this avatar. So we can see here. So this needs to flow into a nice circle. So you also want to adjust this so that it ends up being a square or it squares off. Welcome. I'm currently adjusting these. Yes, the end components need to be tangent or as I learned, they need to be squared off. So in patterning, you literally just take a square ruler 
and you make sure that um, in real life you make sure that there is a 90 degree angle right here for about a half an inch if you were making a real garment but we're not but we're making one that's uh, analogous to that so I would have a point there but you don't actually have to yes I forget that there's lag um, but you would have a tangent curve and now it looks far better and let's simulate and there's a little bit less of strain here I can increase this I would probably what I would probably do is just add more to the circumference here because these the armholes should not be tight unless you're working in spandex and now we can see this is all green or at the worst yellow and we can see how this flows in as well as we can check double clicking again I'm gonna rotate this and connect my armholes line them up so this is just for checking your armholes as well so this should as you can see be a tangent line here or tangent curve so it should flow it into itself it should look like a wine glass if that helps you or some people like to think of it as a um, what was the word it's a uh, an eggplant but it should be about a wine glass shape. So that works and it flows into itself. As well as we can check my neck, my necks. Again, the same rule, tangent curves. And let me activate my avatar. And we can see that it fits him far better now. Everything's green or at the worst yellow. Whereas the other side that we didn't adjust the pattern still has all of those arm issues. Now you have the skills to make a real shirt in real life as well as in Marvelous Designer. So if you ever have to sew something for Halloween or a costume, there you go, or you wanna make clothes, So that's just a way to get started. These are the these are the super basics for pattern for patterning. You can look up patterning online as well. Um, you can look up or purchase pattern books to to learn these concepts. Um, but those ones can be pattern books can be expensive, so just be aware of that. Or you can follow some of our tutorials. We do cover like we do cover some of this. I didn't get a cover um, like in the actual tutorials. I did not cover like the armholes potentially I personally just prefer actual pattern making textbooks um because patterns are great but those old those patterns aren't aren't very good um because because they can't teach you why things need to be a certain way or teach you fit. Those patterns are just teaching you, here's a pattern, copy it, and cut it. Yes, I will go on rants about copyright. <laughs> Make sure that you are not stealing someone else's work online and labeling it as your own, especially in this space. I'm going to rotate this properly. Okay, cool. I did it by eye. Yeah, just make sure things that you're, you're finding are clear of copyright. If you're finding a basic block, you should be okay. But there have been people that... Yeah. So, exactly what Rosemary said. They, there are many that are standardized that are not fit to a specific figure. So, if you have a custom avatar, it's not going to fit. So, you might need to draft your own pattern which we do have the basics for it. We do have a basic pattern for it for, um, in the, which one is it? The instruct in introduction series of just how to draft a pattern from scratch or 
in multiple ways. There's four different ways. Because another way to do it is using the line avatar tool. I'm holding shift to create a straight line. And control to make a curve. Because you can also draw on your avatar. And that does help you account for the um, depth of your avatar. Oops, I don't want a straight line. But it's not going to help account for like a proper fit or like helping you understand how fit works. So this is great for humans. This is also great for... Yes, it is one of the greatest features for custom avatars. This is also great for like, let's just say you wanted to make a couch. You brought in like the bones of the couch. You can then create the cushions for it very quickly. Or you can create a car seat and then add, add fabric to it. Like an actual vehicle seat. So it's great to actually just draw on the avatar. And a lot of the our, uh, features are nested currently. You can change that in your user settings, but long press to get to this. I've chosen flatten. So here's the one thing that also people who don't potentially know how to use this tool. So here is this exact fitting mesh. This is not going to fit right. This is too tight for him. It's still another too tight issue. So there's a few things you can do. I'm using the edit tool and I am right clicking flatten a straight line for all of the major points. So for the center front, for the bottom, for the side, anything I wanted straight, I'm choosing flatten a straight line by right clicking. And then here's the thing. So if you want this to be your pattern, this isn't going to come out perfect. I'm going to do flatten again, and I'm going to show you how each of these comes out differently. Well, now it's come out as a straight line, so it's like, oh, that's great. But it's not accounting for the, um, the shape in between the torso. So let me yeah, move that. So here's the thing. If you want this to be your pattern piece, you need to look at the topo like the actual topology of this and look at him. There is an apex point on this torso, which is the chest. If you are going to have this be your pattern, this is going to be too tight. It's not accommodating for the distance crossing over the chest. So what you need to do is add lines that will become your darts. So I'm adding a line and I'm ending it like here be adults now. Um, and I'm going to have another line and I'm going to put it here if I want to keep them pretty much the same. Now look what's going to happen and how differently my pattern is when I flatten it this time. And this applies to anything with an apex point if you want this to be, um, if you want to utilize this tool. Eh. I bet you I didn't finish one of those lines. Yeah, it's this one. Okay, then I'll do that again. So now I have a dart here. If I rotate this, I actually need to have the other one as well. But you can see now it's accounting for that volume. So if you have a, like an apex point or a sharp point, anything that's not perfectly flat between your, like inside of that pattern piece that you're trying to extract, utilizing the, um, the line tool, you need to make sure to add just a line, just double click, make a straight line, just like I did from one edge to the bottom or from one, from the center point or as close as you can to the center point of that, um, apex down to one of the edges so that it can accommodate that mass or the curve and the topology of it because then you get a more accurate pattern that is not as tight as the rest even though they pretty much look all the same 
they are all different because this one, let me move it. Because this one is just wobbly. It's not very clean. This one, at least we have the straight lines. And then this one actually accommodates for the, uh, for the mat, for the apex. Does the orientation in the 2D pattern affect it? Yes, it does affect the simulation because of the weft and the warp. So here we have the grain. So because Marvelous Designer is a realistic cloth, cloth simulation program, we have, um, we do, we are accounting for the weft and the warp. So if I rotate, let me actually do it this way. I'll show it to you in squares because that is basically just, I've basically covered the basics of getting patterns started. So I'm going to make copies. And give them all an actual fabric this time. Control A, and I'll just drag and drop. And I'll delete the rest of this because this is messy. So the orientation of it does matter. So what I'm going to do is make them rectangles so you at least know which direction it is. Wait, actually, I have a better way. I'll just do it this way. Avatar. Mail. I'll bring it on this shirt, and then I'll rotate it that way. So it's going to apply, based on how you lay it down, based on how you rotate your 2D pattern, it's going to affect the weft and the warp of your fabric. Turning off the strain map. And I'm going to drag and drop. So, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate just one of these. Just so you can see, the grain is going up and down. So this is the, this is the warp and this is the weft. Left and right is weft, up and down is warp. So if I rotate this, actually I have to, un, I have to unlink these. If I rotate just this one, my weft and my warp do change slightly. Or does it? Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes I find that when I do that with the, the base fabric, it does. But just make sure that your weft and your warp aren't, aren't edited. If I do it this way. This is not a good example. If you're working your base fabric, that's it's going to happen. But you need to be aware of the direction of your weft and your warp. So you can check it in your 2D window. That's what it was. Thank you. I was like, it doesn't change. Yes, it does. If you use shrinkage, I was like, something involves it and you can't do it. It's shrinkage. Thank you. I was like, what's going wrong? Actually, yeah. So it normally doesn't make much of a difference, but if you shrinkage in weft and warp, it's only in the 2D window. So it's not, if you don't change your weft and your warp, watch what happens. Actually, let me do this. I have to put the grain back in the right, correct direction. Wee. I should probably lower that. Why am I 
Rain caps. Well, it looks like it used to, and I think I think we've updated it, and it's just proved me wrong. If you have the most updated version, it's not doing this, because every other time I've done this, that has happened, where it actually does affect it, but it's not affecting it right now for some reason. So, so I'm going to do a quick bias grain and off grain, and then we're going to end the stream for today. So what I was showing here, this is, this is the grain of the fabric. Yeah. So if I turn the pattern on the bias, it's the diagonal. It's the perfect 45 degree diagonal. So you can do it with, let me do it this way. So you can do it either by rotating your pattern or you can do it with the edit texture tool, which is right here or the T hotkey, and you can put it on the bias. So let me actually hundred and then simulate. So you can actually see how the fit is suddenly different on the bias versus on the center front on the, um, on the grain. So this one's on grain and this one's bias. So with the bias, the non stretchy part is going this direction. So it's going diagonal at 45 degrees. So, uh, oh, let me put this at 100. 100, please, thank you. I think we'll get a better wrinkle maybe. Let's see. Okay. You can kind of see it. Um, let's see if I can adjust this. Okay. Okay. So he gets to wear a dress today. This should hopefully get us a better drape. And also I'm going to make it 10. Please. There we go. So let me turn this back on. So this is 10 particle distance, so it's going to be a little bit, but the, this portion here is on the bias. So this is diagonal and this one here is on the grain or it's just going up and down. So this is draping completely differently than this one here because the stretchy part is going up and down. You can definitely see it here on the side seam. And however many wrinkles it's having. So like what Rosemary had said in the 1930s, they, they were called bias dresses for a reason because they were made on the diagonal of the fabric. So you're gonna have more wrinkles, more um, stretchy, in this direction because because we have applied in marvelous designer it actually takes into account bias and real life garment information so the weave of a fabric is square yeah so the weave of a fabric is square so if you think of it this way that it's square so the strongest so the strongest it is it's a, it's square weaves I'm actually just going to use the backdrop here. So it's square, right? So going up and down, it's strong and going side to side, it's strong. 
But when you turn it sideways, it's going to stretch a little bit because it has all of this space. They're no longer squares now. The, the strength of the fibers or the strength of the actual weave of fabric is no longer up and down and side to side. It's now diagonal. So it's now these more open spaces within the weave. If you look at like my grid here, so it's going to stretch more. It's going to create more, uh, more softer waves or softer wrinkles. If you look at again, 1930s dresses, you'll see there that that's specifically why they did it is because it stretched, it draped, like it specifically hugged the body of, of like women in that, it, uh, it hugged the body in a way that was very flattering and they didn't have to do a lot of uh, actual designing or cutting sp because of that. They took into account that this fabric would stretch and grow. So because it is going up and down, it's stretching more because there is more space where strain is being pulled, which is gravity. So that is why the bias will stretch more going up and down because this is the, this is where it's all diamonds now. Whereas here is more sturdy. You can even see it when I'm pulling it in, in Marvelous Designer. This is far stretchier than this. Actually, I'm going to turn on this. So this is far stretchier. And so it takes a little bit longer for it to reach the 120% strain than this does. So that is how fabric sort of works. And that's why taking into account real life physics of how fabric works will help you when you're trying to design garments in Marvelous Designer. So I'm going to swap over. So thank you guys so much for joining our stream. Uh, let me go ahead and bring up all of the copy paste information because Rosemary was awesome and basically answering all my questions, all the questions in the chat. So let me grab our discord invite. So if you have any more questions, feel free to join the discord. I've just copy pasted it there. Thank you again to Danny and Eric in the chat under the restream bot for also answering questions that I definitely missed. Um, let me grab, here's a link to our beginner tutorials. And if you want to see more, um, if you want to have specifically your questions answered when we're not live, for example, I think Walter, you had that question um, Walter or Michael, I don't know which one of you had the question involving your uh, internal line and the seam tape. Feel free to send us your file and kind of ask us to show it online, like on the stream, to the community at Marvelous Designer, or also just submit your requests that you want to see on the stream answered, or either questions answered, or you would like to see us cover a certain topic that we can actually show you here. I'm going to close this so my stream will go faster. Yes, so feel free to send us those questions that you want to see. Anything you want to see us do on the stream live that's more, that's a little bit different. We've been doing the Q&A, we have been doing the Q&A streams because you guys seem to like them, but we can always change the format if that's something that would be desired by the uh, our audience. And again, thank you everyone for joining us on the stream. And um, I will be in the Discord monitoring it during the day. We have Rosemary, um, who's generally helping. She is not employed with us. Um, she's just a great power user who's uh, in the stream. And I did, for those of you who are getting started using Marvelous Designer, I highly recommend using the beginner tutorials, which I did post um, in the chat earlier. Please follow those. It'll help you get started. They were done on Marvelous Designer 9. But um, even though we are working in 9.5, but the concepts are still there, you can just unnest your your uh, tools, which is really the most troubling. 
which is under um what is it it's user it's settings i'm just gonna put it in the chat group tools so just change your settings um there if you can't find your the, find the tools that um are analogous to the same ui we've just nested the tool groups so you can just long press tools to find them but thank you so much we will announce later on especially in the discord when we do have more streams and when we will be having those streams uh i think that's it thank you all